Hi there. Uh, I am Heather, and I am Paul's niece. Uh, I like to say I'm his niece twice over. I am a crier, and I am going to try very hard to get through this. So bear with me if I do. When I heard the news that Uncle Paul had passed away, I could not shake the memory of him ice skating out on the lake. He was showing off to us all his ice skating skills to impress us, spinning and taking the corners much too fast. He was singing in his way that would make his voice trill, and I loved it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I went back into the house for just a brief moment. I can't remember what it was for, but a, a split second went by and the ambulance was being called. <sighs> Uncle Paul had broken his leg again. But wasn't that his way? Wasn't that his way? He was moving full bore all the time. His engines were always blazing. He was always up for anything and at the ready. I wonder if any of us cousins would love the outdoors as much as we do had he not been here. He was always up for putting up huge tents in the backyard so we could adventure. He was there to make slip and slides longer and larger and make it so they landed in the lake. He put a water slide in the lake and a hose on top so we could have hours of endless fun. He gassed up the kitty cats and other snowmobiles for us. We did ice fishing contests. He took us tubing, water skiing, kneeboarding, swimming. He hoisted me on stage so I could do the twist with Chubby Checker just like he had shown me and taught me. We did four-wheeling, we did biking, we did basketball, dirt biking, hunting, fishing, bow and arrow practice, taking us to endless car shows and teaching us to love an old Bel Air, an Impala, a Studebaker, and much more. You name the adventure, Uncle Paul was up for it. He'd make it happen. And I never once heard him say, well, girls can't do that. Instead, he would say, do it like this, see? Like most of us, my husband Austin and I have many stories of how Uncle Paul helped us. He chauffeured me back and forth from town to my lake oasis. We'd listen to old country music and he'd bring an extra blanket for me to keep me warm in the early morning hours. A wedding at the lake? Well. What do you need me to do, Uncle Paul asked. When we bought our first home in Oregon, it was a real fixer-upper, and the only problem with that was my husband and I didn't know the first thing about home repairs. <laughs> Uncle Paul called and said, you know, maybe I could come for a month or two. Cheap, cheap labor. We paid him in Wheaties, Coca-Cola, and peanut M&Ms. <laughs> He replaced windows and doors. He put in a bathroom sink. He built stairs, tore out the kitchen wall and floor. One day we came home. He had not waited for Austin. He had torn out the gigantic heater the size of two refrigerators and thrown it in our back room, our backyard. I don't know where his superhuman strength come from, but he always had it like a young buck. He was at the ready. He helped make our house into a home where we could welcome others. Last spring, while my husband was deployed, he was visiting us and he repaired my sink, my car, my kids' bunk beds, my vacuum. When I hugged him and I thanked him, he said, yes, I'm glad I could help. The memories just keep coming of all the great times as a family. I sure took for granted that he would always be here, laughing, ready for fun, and ready to fix. What I didn't know is I wouldn't be hearing him walk back through the door. And now what I would give to hear him say, well, hello there. 
Avon calling. <laughs> Today we mourn, but let's keep on adventuring to honor him. Let's keep finding ways to make every day count. I love you so much, Uncle Paul. And that is why whenever I